talking with Noreen Nash. She has written the book Agnes Sorel, The Lady of Beauty and the First Official Mistress of France. Welcome, Noreen. Thank you very much. Where did you come across Agnes? Because this book is, you know, if you had written fiction, it couldn't read more. <laughs> it's like fiction, isn't it? <laughs> I went to college when I was 40 years old, and I took a course in French. And they said to me, have you ever wondered why the king did nothing to save Joan of Arc when he defeated the English at Orléans? He had, had him crowned king. And she said, it's because of this gorgeous, sexy lady named Agnes Sorel. So I thought, oh, I've got to find out about her. So I went to the library, and I read everything I could find in French and in English. But it turns out she was only 10 years old when, when Joan of Arc died, and she didn't meet the king until she was 21. But by then, I'd become totally fascinated by her. Now, let's say she, and her, she has a cousin, Antoinette, who comes to the family not as beautiful as Agnes, and she's always, in a sense, she's the friend of the star. Yes, and Agnes perfect. is the star. <laughs> and finally, they're asked to go be ladies-in-waiting for a local, uh, sort of, not a queen, but uh, a, a duchess. And at first, they're treated badly. And then suddenly the Duchess says, all right, I'll dress you up. But she really is interested in Agnes. And Agnes is just at that age that a man named Pierre can have his way with her. And she thinks he's going to love her and marry her. Yes. I mean, that is so universal and goes through the years. Is, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> right. Well, you know, um, and then she goes home and her mother is supposedly to have had the baby, but her mother was 48 years old, and the more, the, mo the more I read, the more I realize that this child was her child and, 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 and Pierre's, because first of all, when, a anyway, as, as the story moves on, you realize that that's not her brother, that's her child. Yeah. <laughs> now she comes back to the court, and there's a man who really would like, he works for the king. Right. H, uh, his name is? Etienne Chevalier. And he's a charming man. He is a lovely man. But she is still in love with Pierre, who says to her, look, between the two of us, we can become big, important people. <laughs> now, again, truth, research. Oh, yes, that's true. Yeah. That's very true. Pierre was so handsome and gorgeous and very, very ambitious. And, um, uh, but she was so infatuated with him, which is understandable. And the king takes one look at her, yeah. and he is, well, he's got his wife, and he's got other people, but he follows her, really, back to the king, dukedom, and says, come be my wife's uh, top lady-in-waiting. Mm -hmm. And she really likes the wife. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and um, he takes one look at her, and he can't even believe that anything could be as beautiful as that. It was like he couldn't believe his eyes. And he made up his mind he had to have her. And at the time, he was 40 years old. She was 21. And he was thinking of abdicating because he had no really he, – he never was sure that he was really the illegitimate legitimate heir because his father disowned him and his mother and he, his father had fits of, of madness and his mother had lots of lovers and she didn't care for him and he was always unsure that he was really the king but once he met Agnes he changed his clothes his views and then he wanted to be the king and he has a rotten son the dauphin right yes who, I mean, it's really Shakespearean. <laughs> what was the time element of this? Well, she was born in 1422, but the book starts when she's about six years old. And she died in 1450, but the king didn't die until 1460. Mm -hmm. But it really sort of ends when she dies, but there's a little of what happened after she died. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. As you read the book, it's still a little bit all about Eve because there's Antoinette fighting to be 
Agnes to be like her. And she just, she can do it if Agnes isn't around. Right. But otherwise, no. she's, uh, That's yeah. Right. That's right. And, and as you said, you kind of feel for Agnes in a way. She's not a nice person. But to always hear how gorgeous and beautiful and perfect and wonderful your cousin is, and for her to have the love of a king and be the first official mistress, she sits next to the king, and her children carry the Valois name. To have to live with that, it has got to be a little difficult. Yeah. How did she become the first official mistress? Um, because she was pregnant with his child, with the king's child, and she said, I can't stay, I have to leave. And he said, I can never let you go. And she said, but I can't stay like this. And he said, I am going to make you my mistress. You are going to be my first, the first official mistress. And she said, you can't do that. And he said, I'm the king, I can do anything I want. And not only that, your children will be recognized. And she sat right next to the king and the queen on the other side, but the queen faded into nothing. It was like Agnes was the queen. Yeah. It was sad. I mean, th it, there is a sadness if you can feel for the queen. Yes. Um, it, you know, I should say, Noreen, to our friends, you have been exposed to Hollywood royalty. Your husband was the doctor to 20th Century right. Fox, which was like a kingdom. Right, that's right. And so you have seen life like this as it repeats itself mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. Abs uh, that's very well put, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure there's part of you that, you know, you felt sorry for the wife, but the agent or the producer, uh, they were all Pierre's and they were all <laughs> Charles's. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And, uh, but you've never written about them, because I no. should say there's another yeah. book here that you did write, your first book, By Love Fulfilled. Uh, different era, but people, people don't change where power no. is. No. Right, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I, my son has been after me to write about my life because I've known the most interesting people. I can't write about myself, but yet I become the people I write about. But to, put, uh, to write in the eye, it's just impossible for me. And what I really and truly love is the research and going all these strings. I went down into dungeons and I went yeah. to where the, she has... Agnes goes to Paris, and they throw sloth all over her gorgeous outfit. And I and went there, and I went to all these strange... I went to one place they'd never seen an American. It was so really? remote. Where was that? <laughs> it was not too far from Bourges. And, yeah. and I, they looked at me, oh, my, you're an American? And you spoke <laughs> French to them. Did they like your accent? Because that's... They thought I was German. Uh-huh. They, they, and my French is... is faded since then. <laughs> All right. By Love Fulfilled has to do with medicine in the medieval time. Well, or, it's, it's the uh, 16th century. Yeah. And uh, I, I was, my hobby was medical history. And so I decided I was first going to write about a real doctor. And then I decided, no, I don't know enough about his personal life. So I chose a fictitious doctor, but I put him at the court of Catherine de Medici. And I wanted to show all these, these wonderful things they did in the 16th century, like they actually did rhinoplasty. Uh, I had to find a, a girl who had committed adultery so that she could go to this doctor and have her nose reconstructed. And they did that in, 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 this period, in that period. So I, I didn't mean <laughs> medieval. I think I really was talking about Renaissance. Yes, Renaissance. The early Renaissance. Mm -hmm. But now in Agnes Sorel, again, medicine comes in because unfortunately uh, yes tell what happens to agnes yes jealousy is a very very it's stronger than anything and she had so many jealous people of around her her cousin and the king's son hated her he had tried to seduce her and she refused him and she slapped his face well, that wasn't a good thing to do. And he made up his mind he was never, he was going to get rid of her. And so somebody got rid of her. 
Poison is the word. Poisoned is the word. But, you know, Pierre, <coughs> who supposedly still loved her, even with the wife and the kids, et yeah. cetera, uh, he was a friend to the uh, Dauphin. Uh, and I didn't would, like what he did. No, he was a very duplicitous, ambitious guy. He would do anything if it was to advance him. As handsome and gorgeous and brilliant and all the things he was, he was thinking out, he was always thinking of Pierre and how to better his, his yeah. position. It's a very long book. I mean, you yeah. really spent a lot of time I, oh, writing it. And the interesting, I think one of the most interesting things, it, it was always the question is whether or not she was poisoned or she died of natural causes because she was pregnant and her baby died. But in 2005, they dug up her bones and they found that she had so much mercury in her body, mm -hmm. it could have killed 10 people. So she definitely was murdered by one of these people that hated her. Yeah, isn't that... I mean, you really like her by the end, and you don't yes. want anything to happen. No. And you can almost see it happening. She changed, too. She was very vain, and she was in love with Pierre, but then she finally fell in love with the king. And the one thing that she wanted to do, because Joan of Arc died without uh, ridding the country of the English in the north, and she made up her mind she wanted him to do that. And she also wanted him to clear Joan of Arc's name, and she did accomplish those yeah. two things. Wonderful, wonderful. <coughs> and uh, it's such a taste of France, and yes. even being a hundred or a couple of hundred years away. Yes. Uh, how often do you go over there, Noreen? Well, I haven't gone as, as much lately. I was there four years ago, but I spent a lot of time researching both books in France. It was mm -hmm. a good excuse to go. Yeah. <laughs> and is there another historical book? No. Not at the moment. Not at the moment. Uh, well, we never know what will spark it. Right. But it's interesting. I just did a book with Christina Schiaka, uh -huh. who wrote uh, Florence, the Dawn of the Renaissance, uh -huh. based on the illuminated uh, writings, etc., that are at the Getty Museum. Oh, interesting. And yeah. so much of Agnes fits oh, into like that period. Uh, right. Yeah. So I thank you. Will you autograph my oh, book? Oh, I would love to And if that. you'd like to know what else we've been reading, visit me on the web at www.conniemartinson.com. Look for us on YouTube, Connie Martinson's channel. You'll be able to see the show again or recommend it to a friend. Meanwhile, support your local library because libraries are, well, where else are you going to do your research? Where else are you going to find out about King Charles and a woman like Agnes Sorel? Only in your library. <laughs> and take a child with you. They'll never forget who got them their first library card. We'll see you next time. Thank you. and goes through <laughs> the years, really years, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> uh, right. Well, you know, um, and then she goes home, and her mother is supposedly to have had the baby, but her mother was 48 years old, and the more, the, mo the more I read, the more I realize that this child was her child and, 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 and Pierre's, because, first of all, when, a anyway, as, as the story moves on, you realize that, that's not her brother. That's her child. Yeah. <laughs> now she comes back to the court, and there's a man who really would like, he works for the king. Right. H uh, his name is? Etienne Chevalier. And he's a charming man. He is a lovely man. But she is still in love with Pierre, who says to her, look, between the two of us, we can become and at the time, he was 40 years old, she was 21, and he was thinking of abdicating because 
he had no really, he, he never was sure that he was really the legitimate, legitimate heir because his father disowned him and his mother, and he, his father had fits of, of madness and his mother had lots of lovers and she didn't care for him and he was always unsure that he was really the king. But once he met Agnes, he changed his clothes, his views, and then he wanted to be the king. And he has a rotten son, the Dauphin. Right. Yes. Who, I mean, it's really Shakespearean. <laughs> what was the time element of this? Well, she was born in 1422, but the book starts when she's about six years old. And she died in 1450. Big, important people. <laughs> now, again, truth, research. Oh, yes, that's true. Yeah. That's very true. Pierre was so handsome and gorgeous and very, very ambitious. And, um, uh, but she was so infatuated with him, which is understandable. And the king takes one look at her, yes. and he is, well, he's got his wife, and he's got other people, but he follows her, really, back to the king, dukedom, and says, come be my wife's uh, top lady-in-waiting. Mm -hmm. And she really likes the wife. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and um, he takes one look at her, and he can't even believe that anything could be as beautiful as that. It was like he couldn't believe his eyes. And he made up his mind he had to have her. We're talking with Noreen Nash. She has written the book Agnes Sorel, The Lady of Beauty and the First Official Mistress of France. Welcome, Noreen. Thank you very much. Where did you come across Agnes? Because this book is, you know, if you had written fiction, it couldn't read more. <laughs> it's like fiction, isn't it? <laughs> I went to college when I was 40 years old, and I took a course in French. And they said to me, have you ever wondered why the king did nothing to save Joan of Arc when he defeated the English at Orléans? He had, had him crowned king. And she said, it's because of this gorgeous, sexy lady named Agnes Sorel. So I thought, oh, I've got to find out about her. So I went to the library, and I read everything I could find in French and in English. But it turns out she was only 10 years old when, when Joan of Arc died, and she didn't meet the king until she was 21. But by then, I'd become totally fascinated by her. Now, let's say she, and her, she has a cousin, Antoinette, who comes to the family not as beautiful as Agnes, and she's always, in a sense, she's the friend of the star. Yes, and Agnes perfect. is the star. <laughs> and finally, they're asked to go be ladies-in-waiting for a local, uh, sort of, not a queen, but uh, duchess. a duchess. And at first, they're treated badly, and then suddenly the duchess says, all right, I'll dress you up, but she really is interested in Agnes. And Agnes is just at that age that a man named Pierre can have his way with her. And she thinks he's going to love her and marry her. Yes. I mean, that <laughs> is so universal.